in today. We're so glad you're doing it. This you is bet. awesome. We're so glad to meet you. Let's talk about Maddie. Let's talk about Maddie. This has been a tough year for you, right? It's been a tough year. Yep. It's been a tough... Uh... Take me back with Maddie and uh, what happened to make Maddie a wish kid? Um, well, I'll go back to June 21st of 2010. Um, it was our daughter's 16th and a half birthday. And uh, she had been exhibiting a few symptoms um, prior to that time. And then kind of that's kind of the day that everything came to a head. And that's actually the day that uh, she was diagnosed with ALL leukemia, very specifically Burkitt's leukemia, which is a very rare form of leukemia. And uh, so on our 16th and a half birthday, that's when our uh, life changed and our a whole new journey began for us. And you live in Wanakee, right? Wanakee. Wanakee. Mm -hmm. Did she go to Wanakee High School? Yes, she did. Okay. Phone number again is 855-231-WISH. It's 231-9474. So what uh, was her wish? Her wish um, was probably, I think, a little bit unusual for a 16 and a half year old mm -hmm. girl. She uh, had a passion for the Boston Red Sox from the time she was little, little tiny girl and she wanted to mow the grass at Fenway Park. And um, so she had always, you know, been a, just, she was just an amazing fan. She would paint her nails red and blue. Her, she had sacred walls in her bedroom that was just filled with uh, Red Sox memorabilia. And um, and she knew she knew the game of baseball. Uh, Tom here was a former high school coach, so Maddie grew up as a field rat, and um, it just she totally understood and knew the game of baseball. And so when she was talking about the Boston Red Sox, she was really talking from the heart and from her brain as well, because she knew exactly what uh, was going on in the game. And so her wish was to her very initial wish when they first told her that she was going to be a wish recipient in her first month in the hospital was to go to Fenway Park, sing the national anthem, and meet all the Boston Red Sox. It was kind of said in one, one blurb of a sentence. And it was an instantaneous thought that came out of her mouth as soon as they brought up a wish. No, no prior thought given. It was just an immediate answer. And that's what she ended up going. Did anybody try, did you guys try and say, what about like, you know, Hawaii or <laughs> Disney World or? It was so her that no, we would never, it that's was really awesome. her moment. And, um, and we're a baseball loving family. Our son was a, a ball player and um, she's a softball player and so forth. So we, we were a baseball loving family uh, for her 15th birthday. Um, her, her birthday present, the biggest thing that she wanted was Boston Red Sox tickets. And her 16th birthday, same thing, Boston Red Sox tickets. Those are the kind of diamonds that, that our girl wanted. And um, so we took her for both her 15th and 16th birthday in Minneapolis. Yeah, not to Fenway. Okay. <laughs> no, we didn't make it to Fenway. So, so it started out that way. So um, what was the question? Well, I, I, it, let me say this. I'm sitting here and I'm doing some math. So in 2010, June of 2010, she was diagnosed with AOL. She was diagnosed 16 and a half years old, yes. And then she got her wish in March. She got her wish in March. So it's nine so months later. Nine months later. So Maddie's, as I said, her initial wish was uh, was Fenway Park to yeah. sing the national anthem and meet the Red Sox. Uh, Maddie's prognosis changed completely on uh, February 17th. And she had relapsed the month before, and so they were trying to put her into remission to get her uh, ready for a bone marrow transplant. And, and it didn't work. And so um, on February 17th, she was told that the treatments were ending and that there would be no more. And the speed at which Make-A-Wish put together this wish was amazing. And of course, it wasn't summer yet. We had expected to go in the summer when Maddie was healthy right. and vibrant and we could go to, go to Fenway. It was, this, we, this was the absolute unexpected outcome for us. And so they very quickly... Within 10 days of, of that um, change in prognosis, we were flying to spring training in Fort Myers, Florida. And she was not up for singing the national anthem, but she wanted to see them play. So that was, that was what they pulled together in 10 days. It's it just unbelievable what they did. Was unbelievable. The speed of light. Next thing you knew, we were in Florida. Was there any thought on February 17th uh, when you're like, well, what about the wish? You know, this summer, we're set to do that. We're, 
uh, you are thinking this isn't going to happen for my daughter now because of this because you didn't know that they were going to be able to do this so quickly, right? right? right. So right. were you thinking, oh man, I feel so bad for her? At that point, we were just dealing with everything that was was happening, and and yeah, that was the furthest thing from our mind um, in reality. And you know, Maddie uh, was a special special girl, and. Uh, she said, "I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna live because, uh, you know, we want to do. She wants to do. Wanted to do what she wanted to do, and uh, she said, we're gonna do everything we can. And, and uh, that, that, you know, at the hospital, they, they started that process up very quickly before we got uh, released. I'll tell you, Tom. The one thing that all of the Wish Kids have in common is just the the strength. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. these people, uh, these kids are just so amazing. Where every single one of them has that exact same reaction. That." Uh, I had 855-231-WISH uh, to call, and we're going to be able to do this for Eddie if we can get 10 more. Uh, we have 40. We need 10 more uh, in 36 minutes here. We'll be able to do uh, – Eddie has the same wish. He's going to spring training to announce with, uh, with Bob Uecker. That is awesome. incredible. You guys, tell us what happened a few weeks after Maddie's wish. Um, a few weeks after Maddie's wish um, – we well very quickly after Maddie's wish, her the, the other thing that we also did was we were originally from Colorado, and that's always what Maddie considered home. So we took a trip to Colorado. We took a ten day trip, and her energy was phenomenal. It was like a cruel joke. It was um, she was glowing. She was beautiful. She was sensational. She was alive. She was vibrant. She was just she was vibrating and pulsating with life, and she. Uh, just did all these things that she wanted. It was the Red Sox, it was Colorado, and then it was uh, at the very end of our trip out there um, that she very quickly and rapidly declined, literally overnight, her health just uh, really, really declined. Her body really started giving out on her. And we um, flew home somehow. I don't know how we did it. I don't know how she did it. I don't know how she got herself on that plane. That was but on uh, March, March 18th, on a Friday, we came home. She found her little spot on the couch, and she laid there, and she requested that her dog be picked up immediately and come lay with her, and uh, the very next day, on uh, uh, March 19th, she was gone. Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. So she, uh, she got what she wanted, and uh, she, I think that the amazing thing about it was that um, the fearlessness, the absolute, utter fearlessness, knowing that her life was going to end. And not only was her life going to end, she had no idea when it was going to end. The doctors at uh, American Family could not give us any indication whatsoever how long we had. And so we had to just jump in to the situation blindly, just with absolute, utter blind faith, because we didn't know. We didn't know if we'd get down there and she wouldn't make it, or if we got to Colorado and she wouldn't make it. And um, she just kept marching forward just forward and so we we did uh, follow her lead it was her 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 life and and we felt that that was something we needed to go we just had to have blind faith and we just went and it was this internal fear that was somewhere but we just we just marched forward there was nothing we could do but move forward with her and her life Manny's beautiful beautiful thank you she's absolutely she beautiful beautiful Tom what are you what are you reading over there what, well this is uh, actually something right out of uh, Maddie's journal that I wanted to make sure I, I read oh, yeah. um, we wish she could be here to, yeah. to share her words and let you know but we have some words that she did write this was on March 1st uh, 2011 and it says uh, happy March February always goes by so fast I uh, don't know what happened to it so I'm on the airplane going to spring training in Florida ah this, this plane is making me sick. Pedroia, Pedroia, Pedroia. I can do this. For those of you that don't know who Pedroia is, he's the second baseman for the Red Sox and my obsession and idol. So tomorrow the game starts at 105 and they're playing the Braves, but we have to be there at 10. I'm so freaking excited. I can't handle it. And Johnny's coming and spending the day with us. Then Thursday we'll see them play the, the Braves, the Phillies. Then Friday is a free day and we come home Saturday. Good trip. I cannot wait till tomorrow. Dream come true. Thanks, make a wish. And then on March 5th, it follows up uh, with best trip ever. So you all probably know what happened. So I'm not going to write everything down, but my dream came true. 
I got to meet pretty much the whole starting lineup, all my favorite players. It was amazing, plain and simple. Make a wish cannot be thanked enough. So we're just sitting here at the grandparents and that's pretty much what goes on. Oh we came home from there. And March 5th was the day we came home from Florida. So in Maddie's own that's words, why, own why words. people should donate to the Make-A-Wish oh. Foundation. Absolutely. I mean, we, we left that second game that day. She was not able to, to last the whole game. Uh, she just was exhausted and, and wearing down and it's got to be to me one of the most vivid memories I'll ever have is uh, walking out of that stadium that day before the game was over which she never would have left a game early and we walked out of that stadium and, and my son was with us he was um, just before he turned 19 he was 18 years old and and she floated out on his arms and he walked out of there practically carrying her and she said I will never see this again I'm so glad I was here because I will not see this again and she knew that she would she knew she would never see another major league baseball game and it was that important to her you know it was about the experience it wasn't about things it was about the experience Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming in and telling us and sharing her her log entries and I, I love so soon that too. it is written as a, as if it's almost meant to be read in something like yeah. this. Absolutely, you know, it is almost like she is reaching reaching out and, and here thank saying you. that like she knew that that journal was going to come out. Absolutely, in, in something like this. Yeah. Maddie had a way of doing that. Well, we think that Maddie always knew. Uh, Maddie knew she had cancer before she was diagnosed. I think it was an instinctive um, acknowledgement that she had. It, she just knew. And um, she only attended maybe about six days of her junior year in high school. And all her writings that I have in this folder of the, the six days that she was there have something to do with the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it's just, it's, it's humorous. And um, I have here a drawing that she made long before she was sick, a welcome to Fenway. Oh uh, a picture that she did, home of the Boston Red Sox, of Big Poppy herself and, and her dad, yay for Boston. Now, are you guys from Boston? Or Absolutely what, not. The one we never even been doing? there. <laughs> no, I don't the know. Boston Red Sox <laughs> she just, uh, again, she was just a, a baseball fan in general and a Red Sox fan just because Back in when I started coaching high school baseball, um, you know, and then she came along, and uh, I spent a lot of time on the field, you know, grooming it, making sure it was ready for the players to play, and, and she was always out.